episode of Chewing the Brew. My name is Matthew, and I'm your entirely amateur host to this exploration of how I experience beer. Huh, that's a pretty good intro. So I'll keep recording. Uh, let's see, today we're going to explore uh, the Silver City Brewery Copper Mountain Maybach. Maybach as opposed to your Bach. Um, this is not an expensive variation of a Mercedes-Benz automobile. I know. I can see how it'd be easy to get confused. It's a Maybach, not a Maybach. Um, <laughs> okay, that's enough bad jokes. Okay, a Maybach is a Bach for the month of May. Pretty simple. Um, it is a a strong dark brown lager, but not so dark as the winter box. Other common box that you might have experience with would be the ubiquitous Shiner Bock, which is a really delicious example of a Bock beer. Uh, Bock also has uh, Czechlo Czechs Czechoslovakian Czechoslovakian roots. Um, Shiner is a uh, brewery in an area of Texas that's heavily populated with Czech, uh, people of Czech ext extraction. You should expect this to be um, between 6 and 7% uh, ABV, so relatively stiff, like a bit much for sessionable, but uh, still not, you know, kicky in the pants. You should expect it to be uh, darker in color than your, your more summer lagers, your pilsners, your uh, Hefeweizens and such, um, and it's a transitional lager. It's you know between the winter and the summer beers. Uh, I don't know that I've had a Maybach before, and if I have, I don't remember. So we shall have to explore together what this is. Smells like beer. The other box that I have experience with um, are typically very malty. There isn't a lot of, uh, like hop bitterness doesn't play a dominant aspect. But hops don't just provide bitterness. Yes, bitterness is a primary characteristic of hops, but they'll also produce a, a kind of the vegetation process, uh, taste, the, the grass, the, the, the leaves, uh, fields, because they are well, they're flowers. They're, they're a plant that grows in the fields. Um, obviously, one of the other dominant um, uh, ingredients in beer is the malt, the grain. So, yeah, you're getting some from that too. But uh, you shouldn't just expect only bitterness to come from the hops. Uh, what I'm noticing about the head first off, well, the color. This is like filtered honey from the store. Um, that's like crystal clear uh, see-through, well, not clear, um, but as in there's nothing inside it. There's nothing suspended inside it. So it's a filtered beer, I'm going to guess, and um, I'm still seeing some little runners of bubbles coming up. The head was moderate, but left pretty quickly. Um, when I stirred around, it doesn't just slide back down. There's still some liquid left, so it has a little bit of a um, substance, to it, substance to it. It's not um, you know, just like water, it's actually left some on it, some, some liquid there still running down slowly. Uh, that usually means uh, your viscosity is slightly higher. Um, not, you know, you're, you're talking degrees here, not, you know, this is sludge or slime. <laughs> um, the head was moderate and it went down pretty quickly and there's just the barest little bit across the top now. Smells tasty. Smells of grain. Uh, smells almost boozy, actually. So that 7% on this thing's kind of kicking. Like, in some way, this smells like, you know, the uh, a sink full of Budweiser cans two days later. But it's real subtle. Like, it's just kind of in the background. That's the booziness type that I'm picking up here. There's also apple. <laughs> so 
not many bright notes. It's mostly um, kind of subtle, uh, moderate notes. I wonder if warming this would do anything like it did to the stout. I guess it probably will. In general, American beers and light colored beers, pilsners and the like, are best served cold. Like American beers, you should serve them just a touch above freezing. American macro beers, you should serve them a touch above freezing. Um, but European styles of beers and darker beers in general benefit from being served warmer. Not, not really anything getting up to room temperature unless you're looking at a, you know, a, a scotch ale like, or a, um, like a strong ale. Um, something really, really thick and syrupy and sweet and super high ABV. Uh, but uh, it's certainly not going to hurt most European styles of beer to try them when they are upper 40s in temperature, mid 50s even for some of them. Yeah, still just apples, maybe fields, not even hay fields, just like just a field, just lots of grass and, and maybe tilled earth. But not a whole lot there. It's a real subtle, subtle head. So let's uh, dive in. Hmm. Ooh. Oh. I wasn't wrong with apple. Oh my goodness. Wowza. Okay apple juice like lots of apple juice um, and this real like malty depth uh, like um, dark brown bread not rye bread not not the caraway seeds which is what you think of when you think of the flavor of rye bread not caraway but just like a dark brown wheat or um, or barley loaf or something something uh, thick and toothsome uh, so, so apples, um, like strong, dark grains, um, there's kind of a, a pleasing bite at the front, but it is more of a chemical bite, maybe. Um, I don't know how fresh is this. Oh, this is super fresh. This was canned just a month ago. Um, so it's not, it's not like acetone or anything like that. It's just kind of a... Um, a soda, kind of a, a soda bite or a baking soda almost. Um, so there's some, some bite at the beginning that's kind of interesting. And then you've got these apples and this dark bread um, and maybe a touch of lemon peel. That, that's really subtle. I mean, I might be grasping at that point. Um, leather, like, like the old leather coat from the back of your grandpa's, um, closet. What? You never tasted your grandpa's old leather coat? What kind of life have you led? That's nice. That's good. I like that. So, okay. It's boozy. Not like it's gonna knock you out boozy. It's a seven, this is a 7.2%. So it's on the high side for a typical Maybach, um, but you can taste it. So it's a lot of times the, the alcohol is, uh, is mixed in and, and uh, balanced by the other flavors. And so you don't taste the alcohol. This, you taste the alcohol, um, but it's just part of the flavor. It's not unpleasant. Uh, I might prefer if you had a Maybach, if you had all these flavors without that flavor, I might prefer that. Um, but still, tasty. There's a lot of good stuff going on there. Um, it really, it feels warming going down, which is that's the alcohol. Uh, excuse me. Um, the apple juice, 
the I think the apples kind of fade as it warms more. I'm getting that less in these later sips. Um, but then the, the dark red, so definitely the malts coming through, which is what you'd expect in this beer. And um, yeah, so it's it's definitely not... <laughs> this would be more of a Febra Brock. Bock. Febra Bock. <laughs> April Bock, maybe. March. Sorry, I'm going to stop making bad jokes. It's a Bock for March, not May. Um, so it's, it's a bit on the heavy side. You can, you can taste it. Um, colder weather might be better, but, uh, the, the maltiness and the apples and, and stuff are, are really good. And there's a lot of really tasty things going on in that. So yeah, I like that. Copper Mountain My Block Lager by Silver City Brewery, which I believe is out of, uh, Bremerton. Yep. Bremerton, Washington. There's a naval station there. Yeah, there's a naval station there. Okay. Anyways, this has been me chewing the brew with the Copper Mountain Maybach Lager. So I'll catch y'all on the flip side.